Today I am working on a shovel. This shovel project is a collaborative project with several other blacksmiths over on a Facebook group of YouTube creators who happen to be blacksmiths. And we decided we were all going to make a shovel. Now everybody's going to make their own shovel and they're all going to be different. I have no idea what the other guys are making at this point. They don't know what I'm making at this point. The only criteria was that it was a shovel. And hopefully March 9th, we will all publish these videos and we can all see what everybody else decided to do for a shovel project. That's the only requirement. My shovel design is based on one that I saw in a book on Revolutionary War implements years ago. And it's largely just cut from sheet metal and then formed as opposed to being entirely forged. Now, of course, the originals were probably forged out of a thicker piece of wrought iron to create the sheet metal blank. So this is not an exact reproduction. This is just my interpretation of those early shovels based on a photograph and a book. And we're doing it a little bit more expediently. Now, this would be a great place for a plasma cutter if I owned one, but I don't do enough of this kind of stuff to justify buying a plasma cutter. And this cordless angle grinder is doing a great job. So this is the main body of the shovel, but it's only half of the socket. This is actually a two-piece socket. It has a riveted on piece that goes on the front of the shovel, and that makes the entire socket, the neck of the shovel, and the attachment of the handle much stronger than just a piece of sheet metal. I'm using 14 gauge sheet metal. It's just mild steel. It's not something that's going to put up with tons of abuse because it won't be hardened and tempered. But I suspect a lot of the original shovels weren't all that hard either and probably were easy to bend. My next task then is to create the second half of the socket. I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of this first long cut here and use it to kind of establish what I want. And this is not the same size as this blank. It's actually going to come into here and it doesn't fill all this up. It just needs enough room to rivet this on. So I'll need to cut that out. And then I think I'll use this mark as my width. And that's an inch and a quarter. So I'll come over here an inch and a quarter. And I find a center line here. And I'm thinking about about five inches in. And I'm just gonna eyeball that and I'll clean that up at the grinder. If you're gonna make a bunch of these, I'd make a pattern. At this point, I don't have a full list of names of all the people who are going to be working on this collaborative project, but there will be a group playlist, and I will link to that group playlist here on YouTube at the very end of the video. You can go there, you can watch all these other videos. As I get the information, I will try to put links throughout this video to some of the other videos. I'm allowed five links up here in this left-hand corner throughout a video. If there's more than five other people who are working on this project, I won't be able to put them all on there. But if there's only five others or less, I'll put them all up here in this left-hand corner so you can find all the other videos. I will also make sure to list them all down in the video description with links to the individual videos. And before the end of this video, I will try to run a credit style list of names so you can read the names here on the video. But by all means, check out the other videos. There should be some really interesting stuff. There may be gardening trowels, there may be fireplace shovels, coal shovels, more shovels like this. I have no idea what they're doing. In all my dimensions, this is 8 inches by 10 inches. 
So that's uh, about 225 millimeters wide by 265 millimeters long, more or less. One of the big considerations for me is that this is just wide enough that I can still fit it in the door of my forge. If it was much wider, I wouldn't be able to do that. And that might pose a problem before we're done. I'm going to do this in a swedge block. Now remember, this is a two-piece socket. And one of the more difficult things about this is that I want this socket to continue down here onto the shovel blade. And it gets a little bit hard to hold. If I can hold it with a fuller, I think I can get this to work pretty well. And that's part of what gives this style of shovel its strength is the fact that everything is all these bends help strengthen the, the blade a little bit. You devise all sorts of specialized tooling if you were making a whole bunch of these. But that's essentially what I want there. I think I'm going to get this all assembled before we worry about shaping this part of the blade. And of course this thing gets all twisted and bent out of shape so you need to straighten it. I'll see if I can find something to use as a drift or a mandrel for the inside of this before we're all done. Based on, on how long my second piece is, I think I want to run this socket a little bit deeper so that it forms a better strengthening rib further down the shovel. Using the cross pin is working about as well as anything in here. another straightening real easy to mess this up this is thin material so be careful okay that's good for now I want to do the same thing with the front half of the socket. Of course, ha after having done one side, Second side is easier. You know, if you're making a garden trowel, it's a good start right there. I'm going to let this cool at this point, center punch this, and I'm going to drill both pieces together. I think I'm going to set some rivets so that things stay together so I can move my clamps before I worry about all this.
I'm going to use a 3 16 by half inch rivet. This is almost a quarter of an inch worth of material, just a little under, so this should make a very nice rivet head. And I'm just going to hand set this on the back. And that should leave a nice round head rivet on the front. There are two halves firmly attached. You should really see the shovel shape in it by now. Before I put this back in the fire and reheat it, I'm going to take a file and I'm going to cut down on the edge of where I want to fold that top over. The only reason I'm doing this with a file instead of a hacksaw or something else is because I also want to round that edge up and the file kind of starts that process for me. I want to be careful not to mess up my rivets doing this, but I do want to get that far enough down in there that I can give this some final shaping. Really, that's all I think I need to do to it. That's and our little foot pad down here. And do that to both sides. Now let's just give a little bit of contour to the shovel. As far as I can tell from the pictures I've seen, the old ones did not have a lot of shape. So I'm going to try real hard not to get carried away here. Just enough to make it a little bit more functional. Also, giving it some shape makes it stiffer and less likely to bend. I'm going to try not to screw up this little shelf for your foot here. It's one of those things that I'm sure has a name. If you're in the shovel industry, you probably know what that is. A lot of this can be cleaned up cold. You see little wrinkles. I'll probably come back through and touch up the rivets and make sure they're good and tight. Very last thing cold as well. As I say, I don't want to do too much to this because what I can tell from the images I've seen, and I've never had an old original one, so if you've 
actually seen one of these and held it in your hands or have one hanging in your barn that was done this way, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. But it's a fairly crude and primitive shovel. Okay, I think everything else that I'm going to do to this, I'm going to do cold. So let's let it cool. Just a little bit of final cleanup cold here. You can see, I still got some twist in the socket, but I think I can take that out even though it's cold. And some of this might be shaped around the shovel handle in the long run as I rivet that on. If I made a lot of these, I'd have a better, better procedure probably. But you can see how this is still twisted, so we can go to the vise and fix that. Still a little bit on the warm side. I think we're about done. This is one of those projects that you can mess with for hours, fiddling with this, tweaking with that, and it's not really going to affect it in the long run. And I'm not going to waste your time trying to do all that on the video. It might make it an hour long video. And part of the agreement for our collaborative project was to try and keep these about 20 minutes. Probably I've gone over that already. But the handle, the contour fits pretty good, but it doesn't quite fit up to the tip. And I'd like to get the tip of the handle clear down into the shovel blade. So I'm going to go to the belt grinder with a coarse belt, and we're going to work on this handle a little bit. Now if I watch the side of the slit here, and you see that's where this comes up even. And I've still got a little over an inch here. So I'm down into here with that shovel handle and it's just what I'd like to have. So now it's time to put this on and rivet the, the handle in place. I'm going to put a piece of quarter inch round bar in the hole and I've tapered it so it'll find its way out the other side nicely. At least I hope it'll find its way out the other side and it did. Now I'll go ahead and cut that to length and make my rivet out of this bar. I was going to put a big pipe clamp on here to hold that good and snug while I did this, but I didn't have one, so I just used a zip tie. And since I'm going to do this cold, so I don't damage the wood handle, the zip tie should survive just fine. I'm just going to start that by hand, 
In this case, I'm going to go ahead and go to a pair of rivet tools. This is some place a second person would come in real handy because they could hold this and keep it from twisting like it wants to. Now unfortunately because that rivet was so long and I was a little bit overly ambitious trying to put a nice big head on it, I ended up bowing the rivet inside the wood and that put a little crack in the handle. That may not affect anything. This is going to be a very light use shovel. My plan is to use it in the coal bin for shoveling coal into buckets. So it's loose material. It's not going to be abused much. So I'm going to use it the way it is. And if the handle breaks in six months, a year, five years, I'll replace the handle. It's no big deal. So that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed watching me make the shovel. Sorry the handle didn't turn out perfectly. I think I am going to shorten it a little bit, sand it down, do some things like that. And then we'll try to get a good close-up picture of it. So stick around to the last 20 seconds of the video. That's where you'll see a close-up of the finished shovel, as well as a list of names for the other people who are working on this collaborative process through the Facebook group. And I'll try to share all that information in the description. I'll try to share it at the end of the video. There'll be links throughout the video, all of that kind of stuff. So take time, go watch all these other folks' videos. Lots of great stuff out there. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to take some time, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.